going on guys welcome back to the channel uh, today's video is going to be the last video on the 57 uh, the last two videos we focused on mounting the seat getting the fuel system dialed in getting the car running uh, we painted it made an exhaust so today we're just going to button up the last couple of things um, take this thing on its first drive in 30 years and then it's going to be off to its new owner so what we have to do today is I'm going to add or install that new uh, sending unit that I purchased because the there was an issue with the old one where it wasn't allowing the pump to actually pull fuel. So we're going to do that and just clean up the last couple of things on the interior, maybe throw some more paint on the floor. And that's going to be it. Uh, like I said, this will be the last one for this car and it'll hopefully be going to its new owner. Uh, we will be getting another project, and we still have my father's 57 Chevy, so we'll still have some, some Tri-5 content on the channel. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Uh, if you do, please consider liking and subscribing. It doesn't cost anything, and I really appreciate it. So let's jump in and get started. All right, real quick before I get underneath the car and install this new sending unit, um, you guys are putting one in your car. Make sure you get the correct hardware kit for it. I believe these are 1032 screws. Um, but the kits for these sending units come with these small copper washers. You're going to want to make sure that you have some sort of sealing washer on the ring of this pickup unit. Because if not, you will get fuel that will leak out of those bolt holes. Um, another thing to pay close attention to is the wire for the sending unit for the gauge itself. Hopefully you can see it on there. There is uh, like a fiber washer on there. Make sure you don't double up this nut when you put the wire on. You want to take this nut and that little lock washer off, wire on, and then tighten that up. And make sure that washer is in place. Because if not, that is another location that you will get fuel leaking out of. So I just wanted to go over that real quick. Um, I'm going to get into the car, put this in. Uh, hook the fuel line back up and then hopefully we'll be in business with the fuel system. So I'll get this done real quick All right, so new sending unit is in fuel line is hooked back up I'm gonna try and start the car now to see if any of the issues that we were having before were possibly caused by that sending unit uh, Probably not, but we'll give it a shot. So um, I have the car out of the garage right now I'll just set you guys up on the floor and uh, see if it runs So I guess that was the issue, because it ran pretty good. A little rough on the startup, idle still has to get adjusted, um, but that was 10 times better than it has been since we've been working on this car. So that stupid sending unit was the issue from the get-go. Um, it just goes to show, be careful where you order parts from for these cars, especially if you don't have another one to reference it to. The initial sending unit was off of Amazon. The one that's in the car now is from a restoration place that's 10 minutes away from my house. And clearly that was the fix. So just another hard learned lesson, but it runs. So I'm gonna start putting some of the stainless back on the car that we took off to paint it. I gotta figure out a battery hold down. I gotta fix the hood latch and this thing should be ready for its first trip around the block. So we'll start on that. 
All right, so one thing we have to do before we actually drive this thing is get the hood to close because we definitely don't want that popping up. So this is the brace that runs between the two fenders and the side that is still attached to the car has the latch mechanism on it or the, the catch for the actual hood latch. So this cracked in half because this side pulled out of the fender with part of the fender still attached. So I was able to get that bolt out. Uh, this one does not want to cooperate. Um, so I just ground down the head of that bolt so it was clean. And what I'm going to attempt to do is basically just weld this nut to what's left of that bolt. And hopefully I'll be able to get a socket on it and pull it out. So this getting welded to the head of that along with the heat should hopefully loosen that up enough where once we get the impact on this thing it'll pull that bolt out. That's what we're going to attempt. We'll see if it works. Alright, uh, I could not get that nut to stick on there. So I just built the bolt up a little bit, um, blasted it with some WD-40 while it was still hot, and a pair of vice grips did the trick. So we got both bolts out of that. Now I have to figure out how to attach that to the fender, and once it is attached, I can go ahead and weld up the middle, and then hopefully we can shut the hood on this thing. back on in one color hood rockets on hood trim is on looking like a car uh, I'm gonna switch over I'm gonna put this on my helmet cam and we'll see if we can get this thing around the block Brakes still don't feel great. Uh, definitely, probably need to be adjusted and rebled, um, but we're not going to go very far. So, let me switch this over and uh, see what happens.
So there you have it. For the first time in 31 years, the car has made a successful drive under its own power. Um, there were a lot of reasons that should have gone wrong. I know it was only a short trip, um, but it shifted fine. Like I said, the brakes were not the best, um, but the car stops uh, did not stall. It did not backfire. Um, it actually ran pretty well. I uh, would have gone on a little bit of a longer drive, um, but there, there's no glass in the car. And I'm sorry about the wind noise. Um, it's pretty cold out today. It's pretty windy, and uh, that minute and a half ride, if it was even that long, was pretty cold. Um, but I would, I would call that a success. I'm very happy that the car runs, drives, stops under its own power. I think it looks pretty good in one color. Um, obviously, this is a huge project for somebody. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the space for it right now. My Camaro is at a buddy's house. This car has been in the garage so I could work on it. Um, only having a car and a half garage kind of limits me to one project at a time. So for now, we're going to see if we can get somebody else to hopefully purchase this car and, and make something out of it and enjoy it the way it should be. So I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, if you did make it all the way through, be sure to check out the other two videos on this car. Uh, I didn't film everything that I did. Uh, I kind of started filming for this channel after I had already started working on the car. So not everything is on there, um, but there is a lot of a lot of work that we did to this thing. And I will see if I can put some pictures up of when we first dragged this thing out of some industrial area in Brooklyn. Um, but yeah, that's it. So thank you guys again for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video.